Okay, so in this talk we are going to do some examples of the Taylor series of a function at zero. So we'll actually give specific functions and try to calculate the Taylor series. Okay. Uh, now there's, there's the procedure is as follows. You first find the all the derivatives of the function, the first derivative, second derivative, and higher derivatives as functions. Then you evaluate all of them at the point. Now we're doing Taylor series at zero for our examples. Uh, though the same method would work at other points, but we're just doing at zero for simplicity. So evaluate all the function, all the derivatives at zero. And then once you evaluated all of them, you plug those into this formula and get the Taylor series. So let's do an example. F is the exponential function. Okay. What do we know about the derivative of the exponential function? Hmm? It's the function itself. It's the exponential function itself. And now, now that you have a repetition, you know that when you differentiate a second time, you still get the function itself. Okay. So the sequence of derivatives, so the sequence f, f prime, f double prime, is just what? Just the function. The function. It's a constant sequence, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, you always start from the function. You don't start from the first derivative. You always start from the function because that's what it means to start from k equals zero, right? Mm -hmm. K equals zero would correspond to the function itself. Okay. Now, what do we have to do? Plug in zero. Yeah. Evaluate at zero. What do we get? One. Ones. All ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the values. So f f zero is one. F prime zero is one. F double prime zero is one, and so on. Okay, now you can get the power, uh, the, so from these you can get the Taylor series is what? Of the exponential function? Yeah. Well, it's summation k equals to 0 to infinity of, we already calculated that all these fk0 are what? 1. 1. So you just put 1 there. I won't write the 1. So you just get x to the k over k factorial. Okay? Right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to write the first few terms, what are the first few terms? What's the, what's the beginning term? It's One. when k equals 0. Yeah, it's the case k equals 0, in which case you'll get, get x is 0 over 0 factorial, which is 1. Next term for k equals 1 is? x of x. Yeah, next one? x squared over 2 factorial. Yeah, x squared over 2 factorial, which I could write as x squared over 2 if I wanted. Okay? Uh, and then the next one is x cubed over 3 factorial, which is 6, x to the 4 over 4 factorial, which is 24. What's 5 factorial? 120. Okay, good. Okay, so we got the exponential function. Okay, let's do the uh, next we look cosine function. f is cosine. What's f prime? So we want to find the, exp the Taylor series of the cosine function. Yeah, what's f prime? Negative sine. f double prime is? Negative cosine. f triple prime is? Sine. <coughs> and the fourth derivative is? Cosine. Okay, so it repeats after four derivatives, right? The sequence of derivatives is therefore what? It's a periodic sequence with period 4, mm -hmm. right, and it goes cosine, and remember you always start from the function itself, okay, cosine, sine, and then it cycles, okay. Okay, now you want to evaluate at 0. Why do you want to evaluate at 0? Because then you will plug that in here. So evaluate at 0, what do you get? 1. Cosine 0 is 1, negative sine 0 is? Negative zero. 0, which is 0. Negative 1, 0. And now it will cycle. So I'll just write the first few terms. Okay. Uh, now, if I want to write down now what is the Taylor series, what's the Taylor series going to be? 1. 1. Minus, minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x4 four over 4 factorial hmm. minus x6 six to 6 factorial plus x8 over x8 factorial okay. and so on. 
Okay, now can you can you give an expression, a compact expression for this with the closed form expression for the general term? So let's do let's do it so that the indexing thing is not the exponent but half the exponent. So the exponent is x to the two k. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what 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 will be the coefficient? What will the denominator be? Hmm? 2k factorial. 2k factorial. Mm -hmm. And what do you put here to indicate the sign alternation? Negative 1 to the k. Negative 1 to the k. And you should check now that uh, like when you plug in k equals 0, you get negative 1 to 0, that will give you the 1. When you plug in k equals 1, you'll get a minus sign. Right? You'll get minus x square root 2 factorial. So that's how it works. Okay? Uh, it, it's hard to sort of come up with this if you haven't seen this kind of thing before. Okay. Uh, now, yeah, you could do other, um, many other examples just like this, right? So if you did sine, we want to sine fully, but what, what would happen when you do sine instead of cosine? What, how will it be similar to cosine? We will have written all the all power terms. Yeah, I mean, first of all, the sequence of derivatives for sine will also be periodic, right? It will in fact be the same four things, it will just be cycled a little differently. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you wrote sine instead of cosine, you'll still get the same periodic thing, but it'll, it'll start off at a different position. It'll start off at, at zero. It'll be like zero, one, zero, minus one, zero, one, zero, minus one. So it'll be the same thing. And then, and then when you do something similar, so for sine, are you here? Mm -hmm. Right here. So, so I'll just write down. So for sine, will be x minus x cube over 3 factorial. So, so it's, it's the same kind of periodic pattern, but it just cycle starts off a little differently. I mean, the position of which it starts is different. Okay, and now, how would you write it in the summation notation? So, I'll still do k equals 0 to infinity, and I'll put x to the here, mm -hmm. 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 factorial and now uh, you want you want a minus 1 to the power something just to be careful what you put here so when you when you have k equals 0 then you'll get x to the 1 over 1 you want a positive thing, right mm -hmm. so you put minus 1 to the k that will work when you have k equals 1 you'll get x over 3 factorial that will have a negative thing okay so okay now one thing i want to say we've calculated the taylor series for these three functions Right, so exponential, cosine, and sine. We wrote down the first two terms and this. Now, some of you may be aware that these Taylor series actually converge back to the function. So if you actually plug in any x, then, and you calculate this sum as a series sum, it actually equals e to the x. Okay? The series sum equals e to the x. That is not a fact which we have yet sort of reached. Uh, as in, we don't yet know that. If you, if you happen to know that, that's great, but remember, just the definition of Taylor series does not say that the Taylor series should converge back to the original function. There are some special circumstances where that happens, but that's not part of the definition. So you may know that this actually converges to e to the x. This actually converges to cosine x, and this actually converges to sine x. That's something you may know, but it's not part of the definition of Taylor series, and it doesn't follow from what we have written here so far. Okay.